Michelle, it is Friday and we made it. Yes, we did. <laughs> Woo! Y'all ready to have a fun weekend? Baby, I know I am because it is time for the final four of the NCAA Women's, Women's Basketball Championship. Yes, yes, March Madness is always so fun. You know what, it really makes me feel like I could get out there. I've been feeling like I should be on the court, okay? Listen, yes, I am just rooting for a good game. I like to encourage everybody, you know what I mean? Like, a good shot is a good shot. A good player is a good player. A good team is a good team, okay? And the women deserve to play too, which is the most beautiful part about it. So, and if this year's Final Four is anything like last year's, oh baby, it's gonna be even greater this year. Cause ever since last year, that's all you hear about is people talking about the, the Final Four and then the women and how they playing out there getting their game on and all the great players. At this point, it is a full on event. To the point where even my boys, are super excited about the women's games is just as much as they're excited about the men's games. You know what I mean? <laughs> so it makes, I think it makes all of us so happy to see all these hardworking women finally getting the attention that they deserve, okay? <laughs> Listen, like I said, I can't wait to cheer them all on. It's gonna be such a good weekend and I just wanna say good luck to all the teams and the final four. You already made it if you're in the final four. Okay? That's, that's winning right there. All right, we will be cheering them on, but you know, will y'all like to cheer my first guest on? Okay, he is an Emmy and Grammy Award winning stand-up comedian. He stars in the new movie, Ghostbusters, Frozen Empire. Please welcome Captain Oswald. This is a really comfy chair, wow. It's supposed to be, we, yeah. I like to be mushed up. Yeah, but it's a little too relaxing. I need to be focused, I'm here to <laughs> promote things. I just want to take a nap. All right, hang on, I'm gonna refocus, here okay, we go. Okay, refocus. All right. But I love that you're comfortable. I'm very comfortable. You feel the love from all the people. I feel, yes, I feel <laughs> and support. I love it. Thank you for being here. So let me say congratulations to you because you've been doing stand-up for over 35 years now. 35 years, oh yeah. 35 goodness. years in July. Did someone encourage you to get into comedy? No. I mean, well, I, I had, um, you know, I was, I was part of the clique of class clowns in high school mm -hmm. that all loved comedy. Like, I loved it. But my, uh, I had that thing in, in between freshman and sophomore year of college in uh -huh. the summer. Oh, my God. <laughs> what do you think when you see that? <laughs> I look like I'm about to rob a liquor store. Look at that. Oh, I look so sketchy. It wow. Okay. Well, that, it was the 80s. Um, <laughs> I, I, you know, it, it, that, that summer between freshman and sophomore year mm -hmm. of college where you're like, I better figure out what to do with my life. Yeah. So I started doing a whole bunch of things, stand-up being one of them. And stand-up was the one thing that I got no positive feedback for, really? but I love doing it so much. And the thing that you want to keep showing up to do, uh -huh. even though you're not getting any immediate reward, that's probably what you should do with your life. Wow. And that was my thinking. I love that. Yeah, just keep showing up. Okay, do you remember when you did your first comedy stand up? Like, what, were the, what was the audience like? How did they receive you? I went on at like 11 o'clock at night on Tuesday, July 18th, 1988, at Garvin's Comedy Club. Oh. The crowd could not have been less into me. <laughs> it was, your first time going on stage is about getting over the fear of going on stage. Yes. The first time, you, you probably remember this, the first time you went on stage, all you thought about was, I'm about to go on. Yeah. Oh my God, I'm about to go on. That's the scariest and, part. Yes, and it takes a while for you not to think about that anymore mm -hmm. and just enjoy being up there. So it took me a while but what I loved was, I just loved the hang. I was hanging out with comedians. Oh, okay. I just wanted to be in that world uh, before I even wanted to be on stage. Mm. It was awesome. 
Now I gotta go here because as a performer, like for me, when I was singer solo, I used to have stage fright, okay? So I still you, do. Sometimes we do. Sometimes, right? yeah, you get you get nerves. You get nervous. So you I never created lose a, that. I created a game when because the audience would sit there and just look at you like this. Uh-huh. And it's like, oh my God, I'm intimidated. <laughs> yeah. So I decided to make a game out of it and I was like, I'm gonna stare the people down until they have to turn away. And that helped me get over my stage fright because it could be intimidating. Now Why didn't I have that <laughs> when I was 19? I should have met you and you should have said, stare at them until they blink. Yeah, until they are like, that. oh my God, she's looking at me. And that helped me get over my fear of stage fright. Now, you seem to gravitate to it, though. Yeah, I mean, I, I gravitate toward, I want the nerviness. I want a little bit of that fear of, oh, this might not go right, because that makes me more alive. Because it make it go better, because if you're not nervous, then it ain't gonna go right. If, you don't, if you're not nervous, then you don't care. You don't care if it doesn't go well, and then, then there's nothing at stake, and then you're not excited, and then the crowd, I think, senses that you're not excited, and then they're not excited. That is true, because we, we create the energy as a performer. How young were you when you came up with that? You know what? Well, my first solo was at I was seven years old in the church choir, and I forgot all the words. And I had to get up in front of You went up and just totally blank? Yes, I did, y'all. And the <laughs> congregation had to help me out. And then when I went for the show America Idol, I'm like, wait, they want us to perform? You know, in church, you stand there and you kind of go within yourself and you stand, as my grandmother used to say, oh, you stand flat foot and sing. Mm -hmm. You didn't perform. Everything came from within. You see what I'm saying? So when I open my eyes, I'm like, oh my God, these people are looking at me. They're still here. They're still here. <laughs> and what's happening, and that just freaked me out. I want to go back and look at your old American <laughs> Idol uh, uh, performances and see if you're staring the audience down. Oh, and, and by I then I was are. like, I was really like giving it to him. Really? Yeah. Okay. And you know, I, the last thing I want to say to that is, because I, I come from the church and singing, mm -hmm. so all my family is a church family. And all my family, by the time I was on America Idol, had never seen me sing secular music. So really? it was a whole nother world to go before the people and perform and sing. So I find it so inspiring how it seems like you, you use the things that should intimidate you for your encouragement to be as successful as you are. That is an insanely wise thing to come up with that young. That like, it took me years to get to anything like that. That's really impressive. Really? Now we, we have something in common. We both have 14 year olds. You have a 14 year old, huh? I have a 14 year old daughter. Oh, are, boy. are y'all at the embarrassment phase? Cause I am, cause my son is 14 and he's embarrassed by everything. I am, I am <laughs> at the, uh, I, I'm amazed her eyes haven't rolled out of her skull at some of my <laughs> attempts to be funny. Cause a lot of times, when I'm trying to be funny with her, I still flash onto when she's three or four, and I will do the thing that'll make a three or four year old yeah. laugh, and then she's like, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be driving in two years, what are you doing? You know? So there's always that, like, I'm always looking for, wait, how do I get some cool dad points? Yeah, how do you get how, cool dad points? Well, she is really, really into music, and what's really cool is, the music she's into right now is, like, she's got me into music that I didn't mm -hmm. know existed, stuff like- It's a good way to um, connect. Yeah, like Boy Genius and Phoebe Bridgers. She's oh. totally turned me into that whole world. Wow. And so I, Boy Genius was doing an acoustic show at The Smell downtown. Mm -hmm. And I knew a friend who knew a friend who knew Phoebe Bridgers. So I called in every single favor I could Aww. and got her into this like private, you know, invite only performance. So I had like a day and a half of absolute cool dad points. A day and a half? Because I think like on day two, I made some stupid joke. <laughs> And then, like, you could just see it. You could see that the cool dad meter was at this, and then I just <laughs> burned it all away with one stupid joke. <laughs> will you stick around for a little bit? I will. Okay. I will. Well, Patton, we'll be right back. We're back with the incredible Patton Oswalt. You're in the new Ghostbusters movie. Can you I see? know I'm in a Ghostbusters <laughs> movie! <laughs> Sorry. I mean, yeah, I feel like it's everyone's dream to be in a Ghostbusters movie, it's so weird, I understand. It, it's weird to say that out loud. I'm in a Ghostbusters movie. Wow. Yeah. Well, tell us about who you play. I play uh, uh, Dr. Herbert uh, Wartsky, mm -hmm. who is uh, kind of runs uh, the secret library underneath the New York Public Library. Mm -hmm. So I kind of, I'm like one of Ray Stan's kind of network of other weird geniuses and know everything about the occult and the ancient world, mm. stuff like that. Yeah, so it's really fun. It's like, I'm playing like a young Dan Aykroyd. It's the best. I love yes. it, sorry. I, yeah. I love your energy about it. I just, I love it. Now, I gotta ask you this. <coughs> Do you believe in ghosts? So have you ever seen aliens? Have okay. you ever seen one? I've never encountered a ghost, an alien, a cryptid, none of it. 
and I could not want to encounter it more. Like, I wanna <laughs> believe in it. I'm, I'm surrounded by people, all my friends, all my relations have encountered the supernatural. It, I don't, maybe I'm too eager for it, but it's like, I'm the person <laughs> that's trying too hard at the bar and everyone's like, oh yeah, don't talk to that guy. I, I, that, I think that's how ghosts are with me. Yeah. I would, listen, give me the chance to believe in you. I, I want to so Are you badly. talking to the ghost right now? Yes. He's talking any, to the ghost right listen, now. Listen, like, I know that there's ghosts in TVs. I know if you turn to a staticky channel, you apparently, you're linked to some other world for a second and that's, a, so if there's any ghosts in the static, <laughs> so come and haunt me. <laughs> You know what? <laughs> I think you just scared the ghost. Oh, I, oh, and I frightened them off. Maybe if you, you know. calm down. Hang on, let me, can I try one more time? One more time. Okay, let me, this camera, here we go, ready? Hey, ghosts. <laughs> it's Patton Oswalt. You know, uh, you may have seen me on King of Queens or <laughs> heard my voice in Ratatouille, and uh, I don't know what you're doing with your afterlife, but I'd love to hang out. <laughs> Me. I like that. Give me five for that. Will you come back and see us? Absolutely. All right. Yeah. Meanwhile, you're going to see Ghostbusters Frozen Empire in theaters right now. We'll be right back. We all love celebrating importance of representation here at the show. So obviously, we all fell in love with this video. Take a look. What color? What color is your skin? Wow. So funny. So pretty. Uh, from Maplewood, New Jersey, please welcome Alexis, Tony, and baby Zoe. Water. Yes, have what water. you want. Oh my gosh, she is so precious. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. She, you look so pretty, Zoe. I love your dress. What do you say? Your dress is pretty. <laughs> Aww. You, do I get a hug? What you? Oh, she is shopping. You like what you see? Now, this is a little warm. Mama Hood ain't gonna let you get a hold of that one now. But you look lovely. Thank you so much for being Thank you here. Thank for having us. Now, Alexis, you normally never post videos of your daughter. What made you want to post this video? Yeah, so before posting this video, we honestly never shared her on mm -hmm. social media. And um, it was kind of like a normal bath time routine. And yeah. she says to me, like, Mommy, my skin's brown. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, Zoe, like, it just confirmed that we were doing all yes, the things. The heart. <laughs> we were doing all the right things of just, you know, pouring self love, self confidence, and self esteem into her. That's so beautiful. You gave me a heart. Oh, it is a heart. It, it, oh. <laughs> she is so precious. Y'all, look, that's two of them. And then that's the third one. We got all colors. You, you want me to have this one too? Oh, you're so precious. I mean, you had an angel. Literally. How does it make you feel, Dad? It's amazing. I mean, it, it, it's just... Look, look at these. Here, hold we're on. We're so blessed. I'm blessed. I mean, our journey to get here was so hard and strong. Yes. You know, we, we've been together for 10 years, uh -huh. married for five, and it's just been a blessing. Look, I'm us. picking up the word. Right. Magic. Miracle. Yeah. She's our oh. baby. She's a miracle. Look, she you're a miracle. Crazy, you, are miracle. Right? you are... It's a miracle. Can you say miracle? Can you say miracle? She's so precious. Oh I love it. I love it. <laughs> yep, look, a miracle baby in your journey. And yes. it's been a beautiful journey for you, huh? Yeah, so. Um, look at yeah. this beautiful picture. Um, there you go. Oh, Good oh, job. She is strong. <laughs> it's very <laughs> strong. Um, so in 2020, I actually had a pituitary tumor. Um, that ended up being benign, but my doctor, you know, told us that we were perfect candidates to begin IVF. So uh, 2020, we started our IVF journey. It took us about two to three years, actually, to have Zoe um, after, like, two failed transfers. Mm -hmm. And um, she really is our miracle baby. She just brings so much joy and love into our world and just 
were absolutely complete. Wow, it's a blessing, yes. as you can tell. <laughs> and how did you feel when Alexis told you she was pregnant and you so were having a baby? I was at work, she FaceTimed me, and the first <laughs> instant, I was just in awe. Uh -huh. And I just <laughs> began to ball cry, cry. Like I cried for maybe 10 or 15 minutes on FaceTime. Like I was just a wreck, but it was, it was tears of joy. Mm -hmm. Like Lex said, we went, to, we had two failed <laughs> transfers and Zoe was actually our last embryo. So we prayed on it and God just knew that he, he had an answer for us. So at that point I knew we were complete and it, it, was, it, was, a, it was a tough time, tough road. And once I knew we were having a child, I just, I felt that true agape love. Like I, wow. that's exactly what I felt. And just looking at Lex every day, my daughter, it's a testament Ooh. of that uh, I was doing something right in this world. Yes. God is definitely blessed. And he blessed you with a beautiful family. <laughs> yes. Yay, we clapping for you. Zoe, your mom teach you affirmations? You teach her affirmations? Yes, yes. So honestly, looking at her, it's kind of like a mirror looking at me. Um, my mom poured so much love into me to just be super powerful, right? Know your strength. And it's some of my core values. So every morning where I am beautiful, I am loved, I am strong, I am smart, I am kind. And, you know, this is literally who we are raising, where she's filled with love um, and we're pouring her with nothing but love. So it's yes, it that. shows. I yes. mean, the way she's loving herself at such a young age. Yes. yes. You so, see the beautiful people, they clapping for you. Yes. yes. You came to the happy guys. place to have fun. She's been having a great time. Yes. And tell me, like, what is it like to be a girl dad and having baby Zoe? Wow. The, um, not just being a girl dad, but being a husband to Lex, it's, it's everything to me. Mm -hmm. It literally means everything to me. Um, since I can remember, um, um, on Fridays, after my haircut, I make it a tradition every Friday to pick up roses for her, for my wife and my daughter. That is so sweet. So it's, it's an ongoing thing. My wife's favorite flower is a rose. Zoe's middle name is Rose. So every Friday, it doesn't matter where I'm at, I'll make sure I stop and get both of them bouquets. And I just want to make sure I pour so much love into Zoe so she appreciates the love. And all she knows is love. Yes. Everyone she comes in contact with, she just knows love. And it's, it's, it's definitely a testament of our love for one another. And that's all we want to pour in our daughter. You're setting a beautiful example and you're pouring just that yeah. into them. <laughs> well, since it's Friday, we didn't want you to miss out on your weekly tradition. So we have something special for the two of you, your two beautiful women in your life. This is for you. Because it's Friday, you get your flowers, girl. Yes. You see? And look what we got for you, Zoe. Bring it on up, but we got you. Zoe, I got something for you to play with now. Look, Zoe, look. Look. Zoe, look. You see? It says Zoe. There it is. Look at that. Oh my goodness, I love these moments. How sweet is that? Do you? I think Zoe likes it, y'all. What you think? Oh, you see your flowers? But she likes her Jennifer Hudson mug too, I must say. But you know what? Of course, that we could not leave you out. You know, you. I'm, I'm already blessed. Yes, you are blessed, but you are blessed in your family. And we know you're a family man, so we want you to have something. Thank y'all for bringing y'all blessing here today. Thank you for being the light that you all are. Thank you, Zoe. Thank you. Oh, what a beautiful family. We'll be right back. As America's Diner, Denny's loves to feed people body, mind, and soul, which is why they're committed to shining a light on layered stories that celebrate authentic conversations around mental health. We're calling these stories Stacks of Love. Our next guest is a youth basketball coach who's changing lives. From Philadelphia, please welcome John Dennis. Well, thank you so much for being here. Thank you very much. And thank you for all that you do. Thank you. You know what I mean? I, we don't take it lightly, and I'm sure it means everything to each and every one of those kids that you make time for and invest in, you know? And I, I, as I was looking, I'm like, you're far more than a coach. 
You're like a mentor to these kids, you know? Yeah. What'd you say? I would say mentor, uncle, disciplinarian, mm. teacher, a lot of hats that I wear with the kids. Um, they're my family. Right. They've saved my life in wow. so many ways. And you're saving theirs. Right. I could feel your passion in it and your heart for it. And I know you said like a lot of the kids deal with a lot of different challenges and obstacles. Can you tell us about some of those things they face? Everything, I mean, we're from North Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. So you being from Chicago, I'm sure you understand. Um, mm -hmm. Just walking outside, there's gangs, there's bullying, there's death, there's right. all types of drug activity mm -hmm. in the community. So. A lot of the kids face this on a day-to-day -day basis, even going to school, right. coming from school. Just going to the store. Yeah, so, um, I mean, I've had a kid who was 15, freshman in high school, the most beautiful kid, most beautiful heart. He was in his home, uh, turning on his video game, and his house was riddled with bullets. He got shot. And I was called, went to the hospital, uh, saw him lying on the, on the bed, getting surgery, and. And that was hard for me. And I was trying to be encouraging to the kid. His mother was there. We were the only two in the back, um, his mother and I. And he was worried about playing basketball. And I was more worried about him living. Right. And uh, that, at that moment, you see a kid who you've invested in, who believes in you, who looks to you for guidance. It's almost like looking at your child on that gurney. Right. And um, it was tough, but he's doing well now. Mm -hmm. It's a sophomore in college. Mm. Wow. Sophomore in college. I mean, that sounds like a ton of things that you do for them. It's not just on the court. What all those more things that you do with them and for them off of the court and things that they can take beyond the court with them? Well, we do a lot of uh, things built around culture. Uh, we, we're part of the Small Ball United program. It's been based out of Chicago. Mm -hmm. Uh, Kevin Kaminsky and Brandon Mixter run that program and they teach us, they help us to get the kids involved in things that teach culture and build character. Uh, we do a lot of mentoring, a lot of different classes, grooming, uh, life skills. We do role playing uh, scenarios where we try to give them different things that might help them get through situations they might encounter in school, bullying, uh, what might happen in the neighborhood, how to diffuse situations, problem resolution. Like life skills. Yeah. And then you faced a lot of struggles of your own. So how did that experience like get you into coaching now? Um, going to prison, I went to prison at 18 years old. Uh, was a scholarship signing for football. Just made a bad decision one day and it detoured my life. Uh, eight year sentence, I served seven years, nine months. Uh, during that time, my mother passed. Mm -hmm. I was 22 years old. And uh, that was probably the turning point in my life. Um, I didn't want to be a person that recycled myself through the prison system. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't want to relive the pain that I felt that day. Um, it's something that I live with every day. Mm -hmm. And it spurs me to go out and try to make a difference. Um, Prison was very hard, especially being 18. I was a sheltered kid. Right. So it was a different uh, environment than what I was used to. And my mother was a great mother, so it was a very hard pill to swallow. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as an adult looking back, I'm not proud that I went to prison, but I am glad for what prison taught me and what it instilled in me and what it inspires me to do on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm. So I know that, you know. Try through the fire and you came out as pure gold, you know? Yeah. And, and you're making such a huge impact on others. And I always say, God always got somebody and then somebody is you. Will you stick around so we can keep talking Certainly. a little longer? Because this is needed. More with John after this. We'll be right back. We're back with youth basketball coach John Dennis. What is it like to see the kids succeed? Um, it's humbling, it's rewarding, it's uh, purposeful, mm -hmm. uh, it's worth the pain. Um, mm. I've lost relationships, I lose money, I sacrifice a lot of money. I'm a barber, so 
all of the time that I'm in the gym, I'm losing money um, for my trade. But it's the most rewarding thing that I've ever done. Uh, it's priceless, huh? Seeing kids, yeah. Some of them have gone on to college. Uh, we have a player that potentially might be an NBA player this year. Wow. In a college? Oh, yeah. my goodness. We have a bunch of kids who've gone to college for free. Um, some who've, who've just gotten into better schools um, in high school because of their basketball talent. So we just try to get the college education. That's our goal, to give them an opportunity to expand their horizons past the inner city of Philadelphia and then build life at that point. They could be a doctor, a lawyer, teacher, the next EGOT winner. Come on. Yes, you got all of that potential in there. And I mean, I heard you talking about like the places you take the kids and the things you show them and you expose them to the world. I always tell the kids, I know, it's more to life than the block you live on. Yeah. And the more we can introduce them to that, the bigger their dreams can become. Yeah. But I'm curious to know, how do you fund everything? God, because uh, I don't know where the money comes from. Mm. Uh, we fundraise, we do, you know, old school fundraising. We sell dinners, we have fish fries, wow. uh, scratch offs. Mm -hmm. We just fundraise the parents. They, some of them can pay something, most of them can't. Um, the few parents that I do have that can pay something, they're very good in the fact that they help other kids. Um, I put about $5,000 to every trip. Well, I try to, but I'm always over. Mm. Uh, we always go past that limit, but we just chip at the bait and chip at the bait. And it's just uh, very, very grounding because we never have enough money, but we've never been turned away. God is providing and he keeps he providing. He is and so. he will keep providing yeah. and you keep the heart, keep doing what you're doing. And whew, you'll get there. Well, you know what? Our friends at Denny's heard your story and are so inspired by your openness. We want to give you a gift of $10,000 to help you continue the work in your community. Please keep it up. This is for you and your community. How is this going to help the Philly All-Stars? Wow. Uh, How are you feeling right now? Bless. Oof, you about to make me cry. Oh, my God. Mm. You're blessing so many, you know? And so God will continue to make room for you. And we're grateful for sponsors like Denny's. Yeah, appreciate we're, it. We're grateful for people like you that's instilling in the children, mm. even here at the Happy Place. So we want to just support that. And we're sending all the positive energy and love and wellness to all of the youth there in Philadelphia and everywhere. Thank you so much, John. Thank you, Denny. And thank you, Denny. Woo. We'll be right back. This season, I've loved surprising deserving people in my audience. And I want to keep it going by honoring someone who's put themselves first. It's time for today's Friday Flex. Today, I like to celebrate Sheba. Her daughter Naomi sent us an amazing video in her honor. Take a look. Hi, Jennifer. I would love to shout out my amazing mother, Sheba. As a single mother and a nurse of over 20 years, she's worked night shifts to provide for me and Willow here. Her care for others inspired me to be a hard worker after watching her work hard all those years. Although I will not be following in her footsteps to be a nurse, I will become a veterinarian and take care of animals just as much as she takes care of humans. I want to express how proud of her I am and how she works to better herself mentally and physically. You inspire me every day. I love you, Mom. Love Naomi and Widow. I love it. Sheba, come on down here. Sheba, hey, Are you surprised? How are you feeling? Oh, shocked. Shocked? Yes. Wow. Overwhelmed. 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 That's such a beautiful message from your daughter. Use your mic. Yes. So we can hear all about it. How does it feel to hear your daughter say such amazing things about you? It makes me feel like I did a good job. 
You did a good job. I can see it, you know. Naomi has been such an angel since her birth. Um, she was my miracle child. The doctor told me I wouldn't be able to have children, mm. but God said different. Yeah. And from the moment I brought her home, I knew I was going to be a single parent. And I strapped up my, my bootstraps and put on my big girl panties, and mm -hmm. I did it. Now, you did it. I did it. I did it. And you have also have been a nurse for over 20 years. Over 20 something years, since 1998. 1998. I've been a nurse, yes. That is That's, beautiful. Yeah. I've um, worked in the PEDS ICU, uh -huh. pediatric intensive care. And I tell people, they say, how can you do it being a pediatric intensive care nurse? And I've seen the highs and lows mm -hmm. of my families. And um, I'm just fortunate to be able to be a part of their lives mm -hmm. in that way. Wow. Nursing is, has been my passion yeah. since I, I tell people I was born to be a nurse. Mm. I was born to nurture, to give. And um, I tell my daughter all the time, I said, I wanted you to go into nursing. She goes, Mom, I love animals the way you love people. Wow. So it's still nursing, but yes. she's nursing the yes. animals. Yes. So you, yes. she got it from the mom. Yes, she did. She did. She did. She did. Oh my God. And you're looking forward to your future goals. What's some of your future goals? Yes. Right now, I had just had, I recently had a birthday. I turned 49. Oh, happy birthday. Yes. I'm 49 and I'm ready for the next chapter in my life. She's 18 now. She's in college, um, starting to be um, majoring in animal science. And um, I'm finding myself mm. all over again. Good. I'm finding out, you know, what it means to go out and not have a time restraint. Not have to do drop-offs mm. and pick live up. Live your life. Yes, yes. living my life. Wow. And now you're an empty nester and you empty get to nester. live your best life. Yes, yes. Okay. I've taken up. <laughs> um, I have a gym membership and I'm working on my fitness goals. Now. Come on, fitness goals. Yes. And I, I love cycling. Mm -hmm. I do cycling like four times a week. Mm. I love cycling. That's my cardio. And um, it just, it's my happy place. I tell people the gym is my happy place. That's your happy place. Yes, yes. Yeah, in a peace, Fonda. Yes, yes. Well, today, you know, we want to celebrate that because today is Friday Flex. Yes, it is. We got something for you, okay, to add to that, to your happy place. This is for you. Mm -hmm. That water bottle, I know you, you may sweat, but you shine when you sweat, okay? Yes, yes, yes. And with that being said, speaking of hydrating, I think you deserve a little something else to get you to your next goal. The Norda Track S22i Studio Bike has smart adjust technology. Mm -hmm. It changes your ride based on your heart rate and can adjust incline, decline, speed, and simulates real world terrain. You're getting an iFit membership and a bike. All for you and your happy place to add to it. There you go. Right there. It is all yours, Sheba. And I wish you all the love, Will. I need to get into it, too. Go and check the thing out. Oh, my goodness. This is for you, too, Sheba. Don't leave this. Do you like it? Look at Sheba. Don't she look good? Oh, my God. You like it? Oh, my it? God. I love it. This oh is for you God. too, Sheba. Thank you so That's much. That's for your, your app. Okay. So, we are so proud of you, Sheba. And thank you for sharing your story. Good luck with all of this. Check it out. You're going to get your workout on, honey. We will be right back. Thank you. If you like this video, smash that like button and subscribe to the Jennifer Hudson Show YouTube channel. Check your local listings or visit JenniferHudsonShow.com to see when you can watch four episodes in your area. And don't forget to sign up for the newsletter.